Hi, welcome to episode 78 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Twitter and Instagram. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode's show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, where I sell my hand-spun yarns. And we have a Ravelry group where we do knit-alongs and chat and some giveaways. If you haven't come join us, please do. So hi, welcome to episode 78. If you are joining me for the first time, I hope you will sit and have some tea and knit and enjoy. And if you are coming back, thank you for joining me again. I am so glad that you're here. It is Sunday, March 6th, and it has been a beautiful weekend here in Kansas City. It has been pretty warm. It's uh, windy today, but it's been in the 60s and 70s both days, which gives us a beautiful taste of spring. And we have been outside and um, doing all kinds of things, and now today is going to be kind of a relaxed afternoon. It's super windy this afternoon, um, so we were not planning to be out. And uh, Wes had some plans, but they got canceled, so I think we're just going to to hang out today. Um, I hope to get lots of knitting done and maybe start a new spin um, and just kind of relax before the week starts again. I hope that you have had a wonderful week. I have had lots of knitting and some new projects, so I will jump right in. Of course, the first thing I always start with is some tea. Today I am drinking some tea I got in a swap. It is Bigelow All Natural Organic Moroccan Mint and it smells minty, minty, minty. It smells delicious and I brewed it up today in my knitting circle mug. This is by Potter Anna Wright. She is Scottish and I will post a link in the show notes to where you can get one of these. It is a ceramic mug with sheep and all kinds of little sweaters and then you can see it says the knitting circle and there is actually um, a sheep down in the bottom of the cup which I can't show you um, but like I said I am drinking my Moroccan mint tea in my knitting circle mug. And that's delicious. I actually had to debate today between hot and iced tea, and I haven't made a pitcher of iced tea yet, um, but it is getting back towards that time of year where I will just want to drink cool drinks. Um, so this is probably towards the end of my hot tea forays for the year. I actually made up a pitcher last week of, um, or maybe the week before, of some green, and um, then I had an organic berry mix. Um, so I just used some plain green tea um, and then the organic berry mix to give it some flavor and drink that for a while. So that was good. So let's get into the knits. I have one finished object. You may see a few ends. I wove in all the ends and blocked, but then I didn't actually snip them. This is the test knit that I was doing for Chrissy Prang Left Side Knits that I talked about last week. Um, the pattern is called Old Salt Chalette, and it should be available probably mid to late in the month. Um, and I was test knitting for Chrissy, and I finished and blocked, and um, this is what it looks like. It is kind of a, um, it's a cross between a cowl and a shawl. Um, what you do is you knit the upper part um, back and forth and then you join in the round to work the rest of it. And then I blocked it out and it is worn thusly. And I am super happy with it. The yarns that I used, the um, dark purple is Miss Babs Yaza in the Tulipa colorway. I knit um, my Porphyra cardigan, which was um, the sweater that I knit two years ago from Annie Swaymo out of it. And this is the last of that yarn. And then the other is Handspun. Um, it was my own hand spun and um, it was uh, all spun up and it was a Polworth silk blend and it was called Autumn's Kiss and I just really liked um, the autumny colors with the dark purple um, and I am super happy with this and will probably get lots of wear out of it. I don't know if I'll get so much wear now um, but I'm sure I will come the fall. So that is finished and I need to take some nice photographs of it and get it up. And like I said, um, the testing is due to end um, March 16th. So I believe she'll have the pattern up shortly thereafter. Um, Chrissy Prang, Left Side Knits, I linked to her patterns last week and I will link to her designer profile page this week so um, you can check it out if you're interested. It was a delightful knit. So then I had a whole bunch of other things that I have been working on this week. Um, I will start with the things that you have seen before. The first is the Hilda sweater, which is by Bristol Ivy. It is one of her newer sweaters, um, and she knit it in the... Um, 
I'm blanking on the yarn name because I'm not using the yarn. Um, but I know the yarn, the actual yarn was called Cumbria and I can't remember what the... <sighs> anyway, it's her new pattern collection for their yarns. Um, and it is a beautiful kind of hourglass sweater. And I have tried to show you for the last couple weeks what it looks like. And it has been all bunched up on the needles. And actually I got to the part where I finished, um, the raglan increases and I took off to try, I took every, I separated for the sleeves and then I put it on waist yarn so that I could try it on to make sure that it fit and it does. And I will show you the most interesting part, which is the back. Um, like I said, the shaping is achieved by the um, twisted rib and the mesh. And you can see that it's um, it's got an interesting shaping. This is the um, this is the front, and it is the um, it's a raglan shaped sweater. Um, and knit top to bottom with sleeves added on. And this actually gives you a pretty good idea of the yarn. The um, yarn is Woolmize. It is the Merino DK base. And it is the Moses colorway, which is a deep dark blue with just a hint of teal. Um, and so that is that. I need to get that back on the needles and continue on with it because I confess I took this off the needles earlier this week to take some photos and try it on and put pictures on Instagram. And um, I have not put it back on the needles because I cast on a couple other things. So that is um, Hilda and I will be working on that this week. I don't know if this will be finished by the end of the month. I hope so but I have a bunch of other um, commitments this month so we'll see. This is something I'm doing for me um, and I like the way it is fitting so um, I am motivated to work on it. So that is Hilda. The next thing that I have been working on is um, due to Sarah, which is a naughty gnome, and she has a podcast called Naughty Gnome Crafts. And she started March and said, you know, as part of March Madness, I am going to challenge myself to knit a blanket square a day on my Cozy Memories blanket. Does anyone want to join me? And it's not like I don't have a million other things to knit this month, because I totally do. Um, but you know me, I'm always up for a good challenge. So I have been joining her and adding a blanket to my cozy, uh, adding a square to my Cozy Memories blanket every day. And the Cozy Memories blanket is getting pretty large. I am not going to go through individual squares, um, but this is where I am at. It's getting big enough that it can be kind of almost a little lap blanket now. Um, I, last round was eight by eight squares and this round I am working on nine by nine squares. So when I am done, I will have 81 squares. Um, I started with 60, it started with square 63 on March 1st. I have knit a square every day except for Friday. I missed Friday, but I knit three yesterday on Saturday. So I have caught up and have an extra one. And um, so the goal is to knit a square a day in the month and March has 31 days and I need 38 squares to get to a 10 by 10 or 100. And so my unofficial goal for the month is to try and get up there, which I can do knitting a few extra squares um, on a few days, you know, knitting two squares on one day or three squares. Um, so I have decided to do that. And so I will show you as much as I can. This is the Memory Blanket by Georgie Hallam. And just as a reminder, I am actually, I am using sock yarns, but I am making this a worsted weight, worsted DK weight blanket. So I am using lots of things that are worsted or DK weight, like my hand spun, um, or this happens to be Dreaming Color Classy that I just finished those mittens out of. Um, but I am also using fingering weights held double which gives me approximately what I need. So I am using all kinds of things from, I thought this would um, use up a lot more of my stash and I would also be able to um, go further without repeating colors. Um, and so, so far um, I am going to make it through nine by nine squares without repeating any um, yarn that I have used. So that's a hundred different kinds of yarn in this. Um, I am not sure that I will make it to, I'm sorry, that's um, 81 different kinds of yarn in this. I am not sure 
that I have 19 more that I haven't used, so I'm not sure I will make it to 100, but I still think a 9 by 9 without repeating anything is pretty good. And um, I had always planned to um, end up repeating because I want this blanket to be big. Um, I definitely want it to be like Afghan sized, person sized, wrap yourself on the couch sized. Um, and I don't have like specific measurements that I want that to be, but um, but I do know that I want it to be on the large side. So um, my plan was always that I would end up repeating and I just wanted to see how far I would get without repeating. Um, and I do have lots of similar colors. So um, some squares look similar to each other, um, but I am excited to keep going. And of course, as I knit more, add more things in um so it won't be um you know the next 81 squares won't be entirely a repeat of things that I have knit before so that is cozy memories and um I am updating my Instagram each day with the squares I have not knit today's squares um but that is my plan for um when I finish podcasting is to get one or two squares on here for the day and then I have to move on to all the other knits so those are the things that you have seen before. I cast on for two new knits this week. The first one that I talked about last week is the Foolproof Cowl. That is a pattern by Louise Zass Bingham. Um, that is the actual name. I went and looked it up this week. And I am doing this as a knit along in the Come Knit With Us group. Um, the knit along is sort of being spearheaded by Nick Nacaroni. It is a um, cowl that can be knit in a variety of sizes. The nice thing about the pattern is that she writes it um, for a variety of sizes, different yarn weights, um, different needle sizes. So you can kind of use whatever you have. Um, and I have seen some beautiful ones done in hand spun. It is actually um, designed to be a uh, stripy cowl. And uh, the original is done in two colors. Um, and she has you alternate the colors depending on um, how you want it to look. Um, she's got kind of a patterned one. She's got what she calls a freestyle one. Um, so you can kind of really make anything um, from the pattern that you want it to be. I opted to only go with one color because I am using hand spun. Um, and I am using the leftovers from the sweater that I knit for um, this <laughs> past Nanny Swaymo. It is my hand spun and it of course shows horribly on here that shows you a little bit of the colors. It is blues and greens and some yellow browns um, and it is the Hello Yarn in Waterweed that I spun up for my sweater and this is a double cake. It is about 570 yards which should be enough. I'm basically going to, um, it's also one of those projects where you can weigh as you go along. There are four or five different sections and she tells you, um, you know, this section has to equal this section and when you get to this point you should have half your yarn left and those kinds of things. So I'm using that as a mechanic. And um, I am knitting this on a size six because um, that is what I, I think I knit my sweater on a five and so I think I went up one needle size because I wanted it to be just a little bit more open um, and I really um, have not gotten that much done on this but if you knit even a few stitches it counts um, and this is the beginning of my foolproof cowl and of course you can't see it striped that much there's some subtle differences but of course because the rows are short here um, this is uh, in progress and I don't want to give away too much because the pattern is a paid for pattern, but um, you start with a triangle and when it gets to a certain point, you switch to working on it in a different direction and you will see that um, next week. My goal is to get the triangle. This is basically this um, line of, of yarn overs, the spine is going to be the width of the um, infinity loop. So uh, my goal is to get um, the triangle to where I want to, to the depth that I want it to be today. Um, and then I can move on and work on the cowl. So, and that is the first section. And I also need to weigh it when I get it to where I want it to be, um, because I will have to save the same amount for the last part of the ending. So this is what I have been working on just a little bit. And um, I plan to, after I knit my blanket squares, um, work on this one quite a bit this afternoon. So that is the foolproof cowl um, and I will be working on that. Hopefully I will have far more to show you next week and it will start striping up um, because I want it to be a beautiful stripy cowl. So I need a sip of tea. We went out last night and I feel really, really old. 
we went to a friend's birthday party and um, I had a, uh, a pint of hard cider and I woke up this morning totally hungover. I mean, and it was ridiculous because I ate dinner and it was in the evening and it wasn't late at night. And um, I have been drinking all day long because I've been thirsty and feeling totally crappy. Um, and I hate it because we went, <laughs> the party started at eight. And of course we never go out to things that start at eight these days. So we went out and we had some food um, and we had a beer and at like 9.30, Wes, um, Wes actually had a harder day yesterday than I did. He got up in the morning and he ran eight miles he is training for a half marathon and then he spent the rest of the day outdoors with friends playing disc golf so he was exhausted um so we got there we had food we each had a beer and then um or i had cider and then we came home at like 9 30 and at 10 o'clock we were like oh we gotta go to bed so i feel old and lame that that is the that is the theme of this episode and i am i am drinking iced tea regular tea juice um water everything today so, you know what? I just realized I forgot my pattern. So give me two seconds to run and get that. And then we will restart on the final um, cast on for today. Okay, we are back. I think I mentioned um, a couple weeks ago, I was contacted by the nice folks over at Stitchcraft Marketing and Louette, um, uh, uh, Louette Fiber Company, Louette North America. And they asked me if I would be interested in knitting one of their new spring patterns, and they offered to provide the pattern and the yarn to me. Um, and they they wanted um, they contacted a few different bloggers um, and podcasters to ask if they would knit up some samples um, just to sort of get the name of the pattern out there. So I was super. I looked at the pattern collection, and there were a couple that I was interested in. And the one that I ended up selecting is the Zambra Shawl, which is a new pattern by Susanna I C. And this is what it looks like. It is knit in Louette Euroflax, which is their linen yarn. And um, it's a little hard to tell, but the sample is knit in three colors. It's knit in like a slate, um, kind of a lavender, and um, then a white at the edging. Um, and it is a crescent shaped shawl, although the pattern actually is also written. I can't remember whether there um, are pictures in here. Yes, it is also written so that it could be a stole. So you can see there the kind of the rectangular stole, but I am knitting the crescent. And like I said, um, Louette generously provided both the pattern and the yarns. And the yarn that I am using is their um, Euroflax, which is 100% wet spun linen. It is a sport weight. A um, hundred gram skein is 270 yards. And this is what the label looks like. And the three colors that I selected are um i have like a dark uh pink or red and this is the oops oh my ball is falling apart um this is the crab apple color right and then the two other colors that i selected to go with it are soft coral and champagne so and i started with the dark and i am moving out towards the lights and um, I uh, decided that actually I think I'm going to knit this for my mom for Mother's Day, sort of kill two birds with one stone. So I selected colors that I thought that she would really like. Um, and I sat down yesterday to work on it and uh, spent an hour or two um, in front of um, a DVD. And um, it's of course all bunched up on the needle and I am kind of in the middle of a row, um, but this is how it's knitting up. This is the top edge actually, so I probably should show it this way. Um, and it calls for a variety of needle sizes. It starts on a six and then moves to an eight. And then I believe it moves up to a nine and a 10, um, but I haven't read all the way through the pattern yet. Um, and like I said, this is the Zambra shawl and it is the Louette spring collection. So I am working on that. This is my first time um, knitting with a real linen yarn. Um, and so far um, I am, I'm interested to see what it will become. Um, I find, uh, so I know that linen softens quite a bit um, with wear and uh, washing. 
And actually what I thought was kind of interesting was they gave um, they gave a whole Euroflex care instructions. And the instructions say machine wash on gentle cycle using a non-bleach mild soap like our soak. Dry the garment or item in your dryer on a medium setting for 15 minutes, then lay flat to finish. For an even softer result, dry the garment completely in the dryer. Now I have also heard that um, to get linen to really soften it up, um, you need to wash it and dry it a few times, like two or three times. Um, and so really what I am looking at is knitting this shawl and the yarn is, um, it's not rough to knit with, but it's not soft right now. Um, and so I'm looking at knitting the shawl and then sticking it in the washer and the dryer a couple times. Um, and of course, if you're like me and you don't wash um, most of your knitting in the washer, it's a little nerve wracking, especially for a delicate shawl. Um, so my hope actually is that when I finish the first um, part of this shawl that I will have a little bit of this colorway left over and that I can knit a small swatch in this colorway and then run it through the washer and dryer a couple times and see what happens. Um, this is sort of, this is, like I said, this is interesting because it's a new to me um, fiber. Um, if you remember when I spun from, actually it was the Louette spinning box when um, back in over the summer, I think it was the July spinners box that I did um, to prep for Spinzilla, um, there was some linen in there. And if you remember my talking about it then, I was to spin the linen and then I was to boil it on the stove for 30 minutes or more. Um, and I think I overspun the linen because it was kind of twiny. Um, but so I, ha I have learned from multiple sources that um, this is the way to handle linen and then it will be nice and soft and drapey. So I am looking forward to that um, as a new to me lesson skill um, and I'm a little nervous about it. And, um, but so far I am enjoying the knit and um, I have to thank Louette and Stitchcraft Marketing for offering me the opportunity. I will continue to um, show you the progress on this and then I will do kind of an overall review when I get to the end about the pattern in the kit and I will be posting progress photos on um, Instagram and there will be a blog post when I am done. So if you want any information about this, um, Stay tuned because that's what I will be providing. This will be the next project that I work on this evening um, because I want to try and finish that by the end of the month so I can get back a prompt review to them. Um, and it is, it's three skeins at 270 yards. So we're talking six, seven, um, almost 800 yards. So I figure I should be able to finish that by the end of March. So those are the projects that I'm working on. I have one more that I will be casting on this month, which is another yarn um, that Stitchcraft Marketing uh, enabled me to get. And I will show you that next week because it has not arrived yet. Um, but I have some ideas on what I'm going to do with that one too. So there will be lots of knitting and lots of things to show you. And I'm hoping that this will be a super productive month. So those are the knits, which brings me to the spins. Not quite as productive and I don't have quite as many things going on, but last week I showed you a fun braid from Two If By Hand. It was named after the movie Clueless um, and it was hot pinks and purples and neon, uh, uh, turquoise blue um, and all really, really bright colors. And I finished spinning it. It is not quite dry yet, so it will probably not go up into the shop till tomorrow, but this is what it looks like like. And it was named after the Alicia Silverstone Clueless movie and of course all the um, all the wonderful neon colors um, make me think of that. And it's got like I said pinks and purples and some splashes of blue and white and then there was a little bit of brown in it so some places are a little tan or almost a little orangey as they mix with the pink. And this is going to be a super fun yarn. It is a heavy braid. It was, I believe, either 4.3 or 4.4 ounces. Um, and I'm going to say it's probably 375 to 400 yards. Um, it is super wash merino, so it would make fabulous, fun socks. Um, but it is also super soft and would make a great shawl or um, some other accessory. It has not been spoken for yet, so if you are interested, holler at me and or it will go up in the shop tomorrow and you can take a look at it. 
So that brings me finally to what I'm going to spin this week. I selected another braid from Stash that I thought would be a fun spin. I still need to do my singles before the end of the month for the um, Harry Potter spinning study, but I am going to do one more braid before I do that, try and get a few things into the shop. This is a Hello Yarn braid. It was a club braid from, um, it was Christmas 2015. So Christmas 2014, sorry. Um, it was towards the beginning of when I got in the club and it is a beautiful Falkland braid and it is called Fairy Tale. And it has some dark navy blues and a variety of olivey greens and a little bit of mint green in blue and a little bit of lavender in there. Um, and it is just kind of a study in lights and darks. And this is a braid of Falkland, which um, is kind of long stapled, but very, very soft um, and one of my favorite fibers to spin. And I am looking forward to spinning this one this week. I may try and start that tonight. So if you heard me correctly, I have three knitting projects I want to work on and a spin that I want to start. Um, and it is 1.52 p.m. right now. So on your mark, get set, go. <laughs> So that is what I will be spinning this week and have to show you next week. So I believe that um, pretty much concludes what I wanted to talk about this week. We do not have any current knit alongs going on over in the group, um, but I am looking for ideas for an April May knit along. Um, and I have gotten a few of you have PM'd me, thank you. And um, I am considering some things. If you have any ideas of um, any kinds of knit alongs that you might like to participate in, please um, PM me on Ravelry or comment here on YouTube or um, on the blog and let me know what you think you might like to do. Um, I want to pick something kind of general that everybody can participate in if they want to. And um, there will be some prizes, some for me. So I think that's all I have for you this week. I hope that you have had a wonderful week and weekend. And I will say, as I always do, till I see you again, happy knitting, happy sip, happy, woo, can't even do my own tagline. Happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.